What do I know? Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode on the Vegan Shell channel. Really psyched to have you guys here today. If you are liking the channel, please subscribe. Um, if you haven't checked out the podcast, I'm the host of Make Tain Trace of Soy, which is a plant-based, low-waste podcast. And I release episodes every single Friday, so check it out on your favorite podcasting platform. Or have a look at one of the videos below, because I do upload them to YouTube as well. This week, what we're going to be doing is I wanted to talk about a vegan and cruelty-free skincare regimen. So this, this is the one that I follow, these are the brands that I love, and I just wanted to share them with you. One of the things that comes up when we're talking about vegan skincare versus cruelty-free skincare is that a cruelty-free skincare is a product or a brand that has committed to not doing animal testing. So those are all of the brands that don't ever test on animals. You'll see the little PETA symbol for um, cruelty-free. Uh, symbol looks like it's a little bunny and it is something that you can look for on your skincare so that you know that it hasn't been tested on animals. I would highly recommend converting to a cruelty-free skincare if you can and if you're up for it, totally vegan and cruelty-free because I have some awesome brands to share with you guys. The difference between a vegan skincare and cruelty-free skincare, usually vegan is cruelty-free as well because you can't really call it a vegan skincare or a vegan beauty product if they're testing on animals too, but a cruelty-free skincare or product could still contain animal products. So a vegan cruelty-free skincare um, product is not going to contain any animal products. It's not going to have been tested on animals. It's just going to be overall better to use. Whereas cruelty-free on its own just means that they haven't tested on animals. So something to think about. My skin is generally pretty good. I have probably combination skin. Um, so I get oily in my T-zone um, and I get hormonal breakouts on my chin. I have PCOS, so it's common to get hormonal breakouts there. And yeah, I will sometimes get like a lifestyle breakout if I've not been eating very well or if I've been drinking a lot or anything like that. I have found, because we used to live in Brisbane, um, where it was quite humid and quite warm, um, and I've found since we moved to Tasmania, we're currently living in Launceston in Tasmania, um, my skin has been a lot drier. So I've had to change my skincare uh, regimen to be able to, yeah, address some of the problems I have. I was getting a lot of dryness on my cheeks and under my eyes, um, so I was noticing a lot more dryness there and I've updated my skincare regimen to yeah kind of deal with that so what we're going to be talking about today is what I follow now and what I use now in order to be able to yeah maintain my skin and like feel nice just going to tell you about my basically five favorite um, vegan skincare brands um, I regularly use these and absolutely love them would highly recommend them that is for my skin, obviously, and before we get into which ones I use and what I do for my skincare routine, I would like to say that I am obviously not a dermatologist and I have no qualifications to be talking about it. I'm simply addressing stuff that I enjoy using. So I'm just giving you guys a little bit of personal, yeah, kind of like personal advice here on what I like and what works for me. Um, but something else might work better for you and you may have specific skin um, concerns that you want to talk to a dermatologist about. When you do, you can always ask them if they can recommend brands that are cruelty free and vegan as well. And if you make that choice, it does just help you to overall live a slightly more ethical life. So if it's important to you, that's one little change that you can make is having a vegan and cruelty free skincare regimen. All right, so first up, first brand that I really enjoy using is Face Halo. Face Halo is actually a, like, it's basically a makeup remover wipe. So Face Halo are these little rounds and they've got this fiber, you know, fabric on them. And the fibers actually trap and remove makeup. All you need to do to use them is to wet them and then you can rub off your makeup. Um, I use mine, like, almost every day and I've had this one for over a year it's probably time for me to think about investing in my next one um, to clean them up you just rub a bit of soap on them or something like that and then run them through the water so that the fibers get clean and then you can put them in the wash it's wonderful to use because this is vegan it's cruel to free product if you care about the environment and if you're concerned about living a more low low waste lifestyle this is a wonderful option I highly recommend them they replace up to 500 makeup wipes so that is 500 makeup wipes not going into the waste stream when you buy and use a reusable makeup round like the Halo, Face Halo, which is the one that I use. I think they're a wonderful product. You can see on their website here, 
a lot of great information. You can order them or you can buy them in some of the drugstores and, you know, beauty counters that are down here in Tassie and out there in Australia. If you're overseas, don't know, but I'm sure there's somewhere for you guys. The next brand that I want to talk about is Sukin. Sukin is vegan and cruelty free. They have recyclable packaging. They're carbon neutral and they're Australian made. They use a lot of natural products and um, they work with a lot of natural ingredients in their skincare line. They also have some makeup, I think, as well with Sukin, but I mostly use their skincare line specifically. I like their cleansers, so I use a couple of different types of cleansers, but the one that I'm on at the moment, um, I will be showing you in the video when I run through my entire um, skincare regimen. So I'll show you when that comes up. But Sukin is a wonderful brand and they're Australian and I love to see these Australian brands coming up that we can support. Um, but Sukin is wonderful. I absolutely love their commitment to sustainability. I think they do a really good job of that. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is Alaya Skin. Now, Alaya Skin is vegan. It's cruelty free. They're an Australian company as well. These guys have gone viral online. Like you will recognize the packaging. They are the pink Himalayan clay face mask thing, or it's not Himalayan clay, it's just pink clay. My bad. The pink clay face mask thing. Um, and they're known for it, like the face mask is known for detoxifying and brightening your skin. It's got vitamin E, aloe vera, witch hazel, and obviously the pink clay. I find this to be so good. If I'm dealing with breakouts, this just clears up my skin. It really helps my skin to heal. I think it's so wonderful for that. You can buy these physically in store. They're very similar to Sand and Sky, which is another brand that does pink clay face masks. And I like them as well. I used to use them. Got nothing against them. But at the moment, I'm on a kick in my regimen that includes Alaya Skin. And I absolutely love them. I use this face mask about once a week, sometimes twice if I'm having like a bad breakout. But yeah, it's like nice. It's gentle. I don't get a responsive breakout from doing them, but it does help to clarify and like clean my pores really well. The next one I want to talk to you guys about is called Raw. Now they're a vegan, cruelty-free Australian skincare and beauty brand, and they have some great stuff on their, you know, in their books and like just so many wonderful things. Specifically, what I've been using from them is the Smooth Me Fine Line Serum. This Fine Line Serum is really gorgeous. It's just like I find it very plumping. So they use a bit of aloe vera, which helps for smoothing and hydration. It has Kakadu Plum as well for the vitamins, goja berry to fight free radicals and pigmentation, and coconut water for hydration. They use a lot of coconut in their products, and I actually also use a moisturizer from Raw as well. That moisturizer I find to be more moisturizing, but also more kind of like sitting on the surface of the skin, so I find it to be a great primer when I'm doing makeup. I'll put on a bit of that, whereas I do use a different moisturizer just um, for my skincare routine. And I'm going to include that in the next one that I talk about. But Raw is a really wonderful brand. They're completely committed to be vegan and cruelty free. And it's a big part of how they've done their brand messaging and their placement within the market. I thoroughly enjoy all of their products. I've used a few different ones now. But at the moment, specifically what I use regularly in my routine is that Fine Line Serum. I've also used their Hydration Serum, which I think is gorgeous too. Um, and I've used some of their makeup before, which is all really lovely as well. So I would highly recommend checking out Raw if you're a vegan. I like them. Um, and the final one I want to talk about is The Ordinary. The Ordinary is a vegan and cruelty-free brand. They're actually a Canadian company, and they have clinical formations with integrity as their whole kind of placing. They're honest. They have a lot of integrity and fairness, but their parent company, Dicemon, has just been bought out by Estee Lauder. And Estee Lauder is a company that does still test on animals. Um, they may pay someone else to do their testing, but they still do. They were listed in November 2021, um, Peter's report on which beauty companies were still using animal testing. Estee Lauder was. Now, it is obviously June of 2022. I'm not sure if that has changed yet, but I haven't seen any public announcement from them saying that it has. You can go and check that out yourself, do your own research on it, but I am going to drop some links in the show notes um, to where I have read some of this stuff, where you can go and do your own research on this, just so that you can get a better understanding of it if being vegan and cruelty-free in your skincare is important to you. So that's something you can go check out, but The Ordinary does have some great stuff. The brand itself is vegan and it is cruelty-free. Um, now that they've been bought out, I'm not sure I'll continue to support them. I'll have to think about that. But the reality is that parent companies of most brands, um, are, yeah, pretty unethical. There's a lot of unethical parent companies out there. And there are even like other vegan brands owned by unethical parent companies. That's kind of a whole video video in and of itself. If you guys want that, drop a comment below and let me know, because that's something that we could look at and I could do the research and we could talk through that. 
But yeah, The Ordinary does have some great stuff though, and I like that they're very honest about what's in their skincare, so everything tells you specifically what it is. There's no fancy names, they're not trying to create like a persona for each product. It's about not putting money into marketing and just being very honest and um, having a lot of integrity as to how they approach their whole skincare line. Um, I love to use a couple of different serums from them, and I also use one of their moisturizers. I'm going to be showing you everything in the video today, so I will let you guys have a look at this now. This is me going through my skincare regime. This is everything that I do, how I start it, where I end it, um, and yeah, I'll talk you through all of that. Okay guys, let's have a look at my vegan skincare regime. You can see that I've been wearing makeup today. I mean, you know, a little bit of Okay. All right. Bunny ears, love this for me. First thing we're gonna do is get rid of this makeup with my face halo. So this is face halo. Now I've had this one for a while, I've cleaned it, but you can see this turned a little bit of mascara on there, it's fine. Um, so I'm gonna use this to get the makeup off my face. So you just wet it, and then you just rub off the makeup. So you can see this side of my face compared with this side, and that was pretty fast. That's pretty clean. I mean, there's still a bit of eyeliner there, but we're gonna double cleanse now. The moment, my favorite of the Sukin range for cleansing is this microbead uh, cleanser. I really like it. I think it's really good. Um, so you shouldn't use an exfoliator every day because that's not good for you, but I don't use it every day, I just use it occasionally. So, we'll wash that off. Oh my God. Okay, it's winter in Tasmania. That was cold, that was really, really cold. Whew. Round two on the cleanser. Okay, so I've double cleansed. I've used my face halo to take off the majority of my makeup. Then I've double cleansed. I've cleaned up any edges where I still had a touch of makeup. I make up and stuff with the face halo again. And normally I would do my Alaya skincare face mask when I've just had a bath or hopped out of the shower so that my face is steamed and I can get the most benefit from it. But we're gonna have a look at it anyway because it's lovely, um, but I don't really need to do this one today. I might put another video up where I'm actually doing it, but basically this is it here. And it's pink clay. What I'll normally do is take a little makeup brush and just pick up a bit of that. So it goes on like this, you know, and then this stays on for about 10 minutes and then it dries doesn't take that long, you know. Um, it's very good for your skin, so. And now I'm doing it anyway. I was like, oh, I won't do it today because I don't need to. Fibs. <laughs> what do I know? I'm gonna let this dry for about 10 minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and as you can see, I've dried. If you're coming close. See how it's dried. Okay, so see, all off. The next thing I do in my skincare regime is my serums. So I have a variety that I'm using at the moment. I'm going to show you guys. So the first one that we're going to talk about is Raw. This Fine Line Serum by Raw. I love it. Raw is an all-vegan, cruelty-free company. And I really love their serums. I specifically concentrate them where I get lines. For me, that's mostly on my forehead, but obviously near you know, the sides of my mouth, all that kind of thing. So I like to pat those in and rub it in on top. So that's the raw serum. I really love the raw serum. I think it's gorgeous. It's just really nice and smooth, and hydrating, you know. That's the raw serum. Gorgeous. Uh, next one I do. 
that I do really regularly is by The Ordinary. So this is The Ordinary Buffet. And I really like this one. It's got a lot of great stuff and I'm gonna leave links so you guys will be able to see everything in the show notes. But I just put a little bit of that on as well. And sometimes with this one, I'll pat it in and then I'll go over the top with a face roller. Because these rollers, I love them. Um, so you just roll up. It's a part of, I don't even know what they do to be honest. Like I would lie and say, oh, it does this and it does that. I know that it depuffs your face. I know that the jade rollers are meant to do that. But I mean, I don't know exactly what they do. I just like them. I like how it rubs on your head. It's nice. And then the final serum that I like to use sometimes is also by The Ordinary. And it is Retinoid. So it's this one here. I really like this one as well. It's one of those ones that's highly recommended. It's got, you know, vitamin C and stuff in it. So we'll do like a bit here and a bit there. I think it might actually have solidified a little bit because it's so freaking cold in Tasmania right now. Okay. Now the final thing I do, and I usually let my serum sit on my skin for a couple of minutes so that they're soaked in, and then I'll go in with a moisturizer. There are two different moisturizers that I regularly use. This one I put on usually over top of serums and it's more intensive, uh, it's more of a intensive moisturizer. So this is the one that I'll put over the top. The other one that I regularly use is also by Raw and it's a coconut based one. And it's really nice, so. We're gonna go with the ordinary though. We're doing the ordinary one today. So I'll get a little bit of that, I don't get much. And I rub between my fingers and then pat it on get under my eyes and around there and my neck because any of your skincare should also be going on your neck as well and I think you're supposed to use upward motions not pulling down the skin going up so that's what I do some piece of beauty advice read in a magazine or on a website years ago who knows who knows where I got it from but it's what I do okay all right, all clean, all moisturized, everything's been done. So that is my skincare regime. That's everything that I do when I do it, put it all together. That's what it looks like. And I feel like my skin afterwards is very like, oh, plump, Ooh, it's plump. I hope you guys enjoyed um, my skincare regime. If you have any questions about the products that I'm using, or if you'd like to know anything about them, please drop a comment below. If there's a good vegan and cruelty-free product that you love in the beauty and skincare world, please tell me about it. I would love to hear that. I'd love to go check them out. And as I said at the start, this is what works for me. It might not work for you. It doesn't work for everyone sometimes, but I find these products amazing and super helpful. I've found that I have less pigmentation. I have less breakouts. My skin's more hydrated and, you know, it just feels better. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it goes. I quite like it. Um... If you guys have any suggestions for videos that you would like me to do or topics that you would like covered, please let me know. If you haven't checked out this week's episode of the podcast, that's Make Contain Trace of Soy, go and check it out. Um, I run through all of this in a little bit more detail and I have got links below too for all of the different products that I've used if you want to go have a look at them. None of this is sponsored. This is just stuff that I like. Obviously, it's not sponsored because I don't have that many followers yet here. So, yeah. But, um... <laughs> They're just things that I love and I wanted to share them with you guys. Uh, if you have anything that you'd like me to talk about, about veganism, about low waste living, like any questions you've got, please do let me know. Just drop a comment and hit me up. If you want to keep watching the channel, if you're enjoying it, if you like our vibe, what we're doing here, just um, throw us a follow, subscribe, you know, head over to Instagram, follow us there. We are at Make Tain Trace of Soy. Um, we are dropping videos every single Friday at the moment. So get in there, check it out. Hope you enjoy it and we will catch you in a week.